There's a lot of discourse in the community recently about the viability of open D&D, and there are signs that the community is dividing. With everything going on, it's understandable that folks are exhausted by the conversation, and even major notable members of the community are questioning the future and the movement. But I think open D&D is worth pursuing. If you're not sure about what kind of division I'm even referring to, we need to talk about what happened a couple of days ago. Recently, Linda Kodega, who wrote the Gizmodo article that broke the news on this OGL business, posted this tweet. I'm deeply impressed by how adamant the TTRPG space is about 1.0a, but deauthorization has been WotC's red line consistently. Folks hope to make WotC back down entirely, and I don't think it'll happen. When WotC tries to bargain, will you all bargain? When will you cut your losses? And then other creators, such as D&D Shorts, who has done loads of great work helping WotC employees speak out anonymously, had this to say. This is why I believe that the open D&D movement cannot succeed 100% in the way that we want. It seems literally impossible for Chris K.O.'s digital future of D&D to allow the current OGL to stick around. Wizards have invested hundreds of millions into this new way to play and monetize D&D. They really can't stop now. Obviously, we need to keep fighting for the best possible OGL we can get that does the least harm to the community, but in terms of literally keeping the old OGL 1.0a, I don't think it's, it's gonna happen. Now, at first, I was a bit gutted when I saw all of this, feeling like the movement itself was fizzling out. But after really considering it, I have to say, I get it. I understand where they're coming from. The original sentiment of the open D&D movement was to get WotC or Hasbro to walk back everything and simply leave 1.0a alone. But having them walk it back themselves just isn't going to happen. But just because it's not going to be that easy, by no stretch means it's over. There are still so many ways that the open D&D movement can work with your help. All we need is a little focus, and so hopefully, in this video, we can explore that. So, first off, and most notably, nothing has actually changed. The OGL 1.0a is still there, and we still have the chance to keep it intact. Now, don't misunderstand me, WotC still obviously will try and do everything they can to stop this, but whether they would actually succeed is still up for debate. Before I go into it, I want to point out that I'm not a lawyer, so take this to be a representation of what some of us in the community believe at this moment in time, not legal advice. But at the time of being written, the original open gaming license was intended to be irrevocable. Co-author to the OGL Ryan Dancy confirms this during his interview on Roll for Combat. So when um, you said that it wouldn't cause problems, uh, would you say that you intended for it not to later be revoked or, or yes. revocable? <laughs> yes. If the license itself could be revoked or terminated, then there would be a risk to all parties involved that at some point the work that they had done would become valueless and therefore they wouldn't contribute in the first place. So it's it's axiomatic that the license has to be unrevocable or it, no one will use it. Honestly, the whole interview is just fantastic. It's some of the best history and insight on the topic I've ever seen. So definitely go and give it a watch if you haven't already. But this suggests that the OGL, even though wizards want to, cannot be revoked. Roll for Combat have another video in which they explore this. Right? I mean, there's no dispute that this was an authorized license. They've operated under it for decades. They can have another authorized version linked to other content if they mm -hmm. want, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that this version goes away. And in fact, the fact that their own language suggests that there could be more than one authorized version at a time leads to the conclusion, I would think, that they can't undo the old versions, they can just make new ones. So will WotC try and deauthorize, revoke, or nullify the OGL? Yeah, it's looking very likely that they will try. But whether they can is a totally different matter, and one we're not going to know the answer to for quite some time. But I do think it will be questioned. There's already some talk of publishers taking this to court. With 22 years of use in the industry, the OGL has been vital to the success of many notable companies. Even WotC's main competitor in this space, Paizo, have publicly stated, Paizo does not believe that the OGL 1.0a can be deauthorized ever. While we are prepared to argue that point in a court of law if need be, we don't want to have to do that, and we know that many of our fellow publishers are not in a position to do so. So, although no one wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hasbro, it might be that it goes to court anyway. 
but going to court against Hasbro is expensive and it will take a lot of time. We need to have things that we can do now. And we do, which brings me to my second point. There's something that you can do right now, and that's answer the open gaming playtest survey. Whilst we all know that the OGL not a draft 1.1 was awful and the new OGL actually a draft 1.2 is barely even better, it's still something we should fight to make as good as possible. You can do this by answering the surveys in good faith. However, also make sure you publish those answers publicly. This means that once he gets the answers that they need, but we also maintain the momentum and keep the online discourse going. It's true that the OGL draft 1.2 or whatever version they're trying to push won't be as good as 1.0a, but because there is a non-0% chance that the original open game license could be revoked, we have to make sure we can push WotC to make whatever new version the best it can be. Personally, I believe that the difference between the OGL not a draft 1.1 and the OGL actually a draft 1.2 already proves that we have some ability to encourage them to listen to us and move in the right direction. So after you've spent 15 minutes helping WotC not totally ruin the community by filling out the survey, maybe you're looking for other ways to help. Other major players in the hobby have already begun to band together to keep open gaming alive as a whole. Most notably, Paizo and over 1,500 other third-party publishers have all united to start work on the Open RPG Creative Licence, or the ORC for short. This collaborative effort by some of our community's best and brightest gives us a new open RPG creative license that will be built system agnostic for independent game publishers. With a license like that, we could almost cut Wizards of the Coast out of this conversation entirely and produce something that represents what the authors of the OGL 1.0a had always intended for the community. Okay, so we can potentially save the OGL 1.0a Make OGL 1.2 the best we can, and then support the org license and others so they have better alternatives. Yes, and those are all great things that we can do, but I know some people are going to say that they need to have something that they can do right now to make things better. And I agree with them. And we can. A major way you can help right now is by continuing or starting to support existing third-party publishers. There are so many creators out there that use the OGL 1.0a that are really feeling the pinch right now. Years worth of previous work and years worth of plans have been completely derailed because of everything that's going on. Look, speaking from personal experience, my entire last year worth of work playtesting my Strixhaven content and all of my social combat rules for 5e and modular bases for players and adventures and even my rules for husky racing have all been completely tanked by this. I have no idea what the future holds, but in the meantime, like so many others in this community, I'm in a holding pattern of working on content I don't even know if I'll be able to fit. Seriously, if you've only ever used WotC content, now is the perfect time to branch out and see what third-party publishers have. You could check out Cobalt Press's Tome of Monsters, or try out Indestructible Boy's Alchemist class, or yes, a shameless plug here, check out any of my free adventures or one-shots over on my Patreon. There's never been a better time to support and enjoy third-party content. However, if you're just done with D&D after all of this, that's also totally understandable. But please, do not give up on the TTRPG community as a whole. Pick up another game that sounds fun. Join a one-shot on one of the official Discord servers like the Pathfinder 2e Discord. More games are being posted every day for all time zones. You don't even need to learn the rules. People are going out of their way to ensure D&D folks looking for a new TTRPG have that opportunity. It's honestly one of the coolest things I've ever seen in this community. There's so many different games out there and so many people willing to help that, yeah, 5e isn't in a great place right now, but you've got so many other good options. But for all those supportive things that you can do that have a really positive impact, there's one thing that you can do that stands out shoulders above the rest that will make Hasbro listen the most. The best way you can help is by boycotting Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. Don't let Watsy's actions and bad behaviour go unchecked here. You can send the strongest message by stopping your D&D Beyond sub right now. Don't wait and see what changes they will or won't make. They've already treated this community terribly. You can stop buying WotC published books, you can refuse to watch the new film, and even better, all that money you save, you can now spend on non D&D rule books or spend on third-party publisher content. 
Watsi has behaved awfully and it's up to us as a community to continue to support one another. We have to show Watsi that the way that they handled this was not okay. And if the only way that they're going to listen is through money, then this is the easiest and most direct way that we can make an impact. I know this all seems doom and gloom and pretty intense, but I do hope in some small way that this video helps some people understand that there is so much you can do right now to have a positive impact. I know firsthand how tough it is right now, but I also know firsthand how much this community has helped me by working together. I truly think that together we can make the hobby better than it ever was before. There is a way to keep moving forward with Open D&D. Open D&D is not over. Please stay civil, be kind to one another and show your support.